Hello everyone, this is Ben Ryder from the Academy of Gaming, Film and Animation and what we're looking at today is how we can rig up our chest now that we've fully UV, uh, UV unwrapped and textured our sort of chest. So we're looking at how can we start animating it now. We are going to be using a rig and the reason for that is because when we import into Unreal, if we have a skeletal rig, it allows us a lot more options. Um, it also allows for a much smoother transition from one program to the next. But the other thing as well is that it introduces us to rigs before we start looking at character rigs um, in stage two. So if you're already familiar with how to create and rig and keyframe with rigs, um, then doing walk cycles and run cycles and things like that will be a lot easier. So it is recommended that we sort of start here with something simple like a chest, even though it might feel like over kill just so we can get the idea and principles behind a rig. So what is a rig? Well we have our object here and we could keyframe those animations in here just using our, um, our just our timeline down here just by pressing you know S and then just sort of you know opening up further and just S like that. We could do that um, but a rig allows us to do that just by having it parented to that rig. So now for example when I pull this up it doesn't just go up, but it also pulls that latch with it. So as you can see, it sort of has that there. We've got a little bit of a constraint on there, just sort of helping a little bit with the animation. So it sort of always points down. When we get to that part here, we can then just animate that up to this point here. And so we can just you know, get some secondary motion sort of happening there and everything. Um, and so that will just sort of help with that and everything. Uh, but we can also then animate the handles as well. We can also move back the whole sort of rig here and say, let's, you know, put some, you know, inertia behind it. Um, so that's why we use rigs. It allows for this higher, higher graphical uh, animation and such. So that's what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be learning how to create and parent up this rig. So I'm just going to delete all these keyframes here. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to actually deparent it from this. So I'm going to select it here and go unparent. I'm going to actually select all of the children, um, which are these ones here. And I'm just going to go unparent and then delete that rig. If I try and delete that rig when it has, um, it's still parented, it will take the rig with it. So let's get started. We're going to get rid of that locator and a couple of these other sort of extra things we don't need here. So uh, first things first, let's get this one back into position. We want to make sure it is uh, all zeroed out, not like that. <laughs> um, so we just want to make sure there's no rotations there. Oh goodness, uh, maybe that one needs to be at zero. That needs to be at zero. Uh, no, that one can stay as well. So it's a bit of a thing. You've got to make sure everything is in place. It's a bit crooked now. So just going to line things up back to where they were originally. So this is a big part of the process is just sort of getting things into position and making sure that everything is zeroed out. Um, otherwise, when you go to try and uh, rig things, it can be a little bit hard. So hopefully you will start off with a much cleaner sort of uh, mesh than I will um, to begin. And I'm just going to go, oh, yeah, let's get rid of those keyframes. So to delete keyframes, we just select them here, right click, delete. And now um, we just want to straighten things up like so. I'm just going to you know, move that back to position where it should be, which is over this latch here. And with any luck, that will be the last thing we will need to do. Yep, just gonna straighten up these as well. Cool. All right. If you look hard, and then that one as well. One if you hard lock, and then I'm just gonna bring these back to their starting position there. Cool, so now we have all that. Um, just going to fix this up as well. Right, so hopefully yours will be cleaner than mine, um, but we're basically ready to start now. I'm gonna select everything, freeze delete history and freeze transformations, that should zero. 
everything out there and for some reason that has now brought that to there when it shouldn't oh goodness okay don't know why that's decided to do that we're just going to work with as is and keep moving from there so i'm going to go hit a rigging and we're going to start putting in our rigs. We also go to our rigging shelf here. So this foam here is basically just going to create a joint that we're going to work with. Again, later on we can work with constraints, but just for now we're going to work with these. And I try to work in the orthographic mode as best I can. So uh, the first foam we're going to put in is just going to be on the ground of the object. So I'm just going to click here and then click up like so. And you may notice that these joints here look a little bit too big. So I'm going to double click on this tool here, go down to bone radius and just turn some of these values down um, so that they are a little bit easier to work with. So, yep, that's there. Good, so I'm now going to, now that I've got that first bone in place, I'm gonna have another bone that goes up here that basically just connects the lid to the body. So when I animate the body, the lid moves with it, but it allows me later on to animate the lid as well. I'm then gonna go straight across to here to where the hinge is and then go down as well. Okay, so it's still a bit big. You'd probably adjust some of those settings there, um, but that's looking good so far. Now I want one that's coming out to the handles. So I'm going to select my uh, tool here again, going to go into my joint and I'm gonna move up from that first joint there to this one, and I'm gonna come up to here and then go down. Now, you could use, and there are symmetry tools in here, I advise against it simply because it can adjust the rotation gimbals, which we don't really want to have happen. So I always just try and stick to, um, try to just do it um, by eye, um, because at least then it means that the rotations and everything are gonna be the same when we start animating it. So we have our rig here now, but what we need is to connect things to these bones. So it's really simple inside of Maya. I just simply select the object that I want to parent. I then hold down shift and select it to the bone that I want to parent it to. And then I just press P on the keyboard to parent that in. So I'm just going to select this one first and parent it here to the root bone. So now when that root bone moves, the um, body moves with it. So now I'll just parent in the rest of them, hold down shift, select the bone and press P. The order is really important. I don't want to parent the bone to the object, I want to parent the object to the bone. The bone should move, so that's the last one we select, okay? So we'll go here, select that one. We're then going to go here and select that one. And that is our chest all rigged up and ready to go. Um, so later we'll look at a little bit of animation, but for now, if you could just get to that point, um, it's a good place to start, and then we'll start looking at animating. But just to give you a bit of a crash course here, um, if you press S on the keyboard and then move it across here, um, and then you move this thing, we'll just move it here, for example. In fact, I'll just press S again just to create a loop, and then all of these middle ones, I'll create a bit of a, a rumble animation here and everything. I'm just freeballing it here, um, but you know, just you'll probably be able to do it better and everything, but as you can see, it goes through. Now, one thing to remember, if it's playing super fast when you press play, is to come down here to this one and change it from play every frame to 24 frames per second. And now when you play it, it'll play at a rate that you can at least look at it. So have a go at that. Um, then we'll start looking at, you know, how do we do the open and close animation? And then finally, how do we export that animation into, um, out of Maya and into Unreal?